Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hockey Nova Scotia Day of Champions. Here from the Rath Eastland Community Centre, we apologize for the delay in getting started. You've only missed about 14 seconds, or a minute and 14 seconds of action here at the U11B Championship game between the West Hans Warriors and the Cole Harbour Red Wings. Warriors in blue, Red Wings in white, and we are just underway, as mentioned. And again, we apologize for the delay in getting started. There we have the face-off. This is, again, the 11B, or U11B, championship game between the Red Wings and the Warriors here at the Hockey Nova Scotia Day of Champions. My name is Michael Petter, and we are indeed underway. There's a shot and a save made by the Warriors goaltender, Emily Hines. Hines with a big save early, as both goaltenders have now made one save. The starting goaltender... For the Red Wings, is, or for the, uh, yes, for the Red Wings, is uh, pa Patrick Marsden getting the start. Uh, and I was told when I was talking to the Red Wings coaching staff a little bit earlier that Marsden and Callum Hartland are going to split the time. They're not sure exactly how the time is going to get split between the two, two goaltenders, but it will indeed get split. And so both goalies will get a chance to see action here on this championship Saturday. As working the puck ahead, Waugh trying to get it up the boards there for the Red Wings. Waugh pokes it ahead again, and it goes down into the Warriors' end. Back to pick up there is going to be, uh, that is, just double-checking the number there. That is Alex Pitcher. Pitcher trying to work it ahead out to center. He gets it out to center, but Ethan Spicer dumping it right back into the zone. Pass ahead now. Pitcher will play it out to center. Brought back in across the blue line there now by Braden Gallant. Gallant gets tied up along the boards. That'll allow Crow to try and get it out of the zone, but not able to do so as the puck was knocked down by Spicer. Now down into the corner. Battle in the corner there for the puck. Trying to work it free is Waugh. Waugh gets it out. Or Sorry, that was uh, Grigoriev who got it out. Waugh with the shot from the point, and that got deflected away. And now getting the puck off the wall and out to center is Crow. Dumped right back in again by the Red Wings here as we've played about 2 minutes 45 seconds of the opening period here. Again, it is the U11B championship game between the West Hans Warriors in blue and the Cole Harbor Red Wings in white. Waugh plays the puck across the far side. Stepping up to pick up is Hurtis. Hurtis working in, gets the shot away. That goes wide, comes off the end boards all the way around to the near side, and it'll be picked up there by uh, uh, Wartman. And Nathan Wartman gets it out down the length of the ice. And it's not going to be hard enough for an icing. Back to get it is Waugh. Logan Waugh trying to get away from the forecheck of Stevens. Waugh now will reverse field and go back behind the net the other way. And has to make a quick pass ahead to get past Wartman. Puck held in at the line there by Arthur. Played out to center. Arthur goes to knock it back into the zone. It's knocked down at the blue line. Sent back out. McNeil will pick up for the Warriors. Get it out to center. Looking to dump it back in again was Houston, but it, that got knocked down by uh, Highland, and Highland got it down into the Red Wing zone. Just about four minutes gone here, first period. It's three 15-minute periods here in this game. As it will be for all of the games here this weekend. And we appreciate having you here along with us on o AOTV. Petter Picto Sports throughout the two days here at the Rath Eastland Community Center. Nine games in total over these two days. Puck goes back into the Red Wing zone. Purcell tried to clear it, but Leopold knocks it down. Following up is Weil. Weil can't get a shot away as the puck is knocked down. Now it comes out to center. Dumped back in again by Green Lewis. And back to pick up is Duffy. Duffy plays it up the wall. Carrying out to center is Arsenault. Arsenal Batik has it knocked off his stick and now coming the other way is Weil. Weil gets it ahead to Leopold. Here comes Leopold working in. Leopold, nice little move. Leopold gets a shot away and that goes off the outside of the net. Great effort there by Leopold. And now coming back out to center. The other way, Arsenal Batik has it knocked off his stick. Weil dumps it in. It goes off the post. And nearly a dangerous play there for Marsden. Marsden covers up and hangs on for a faceoff. With 5.08 gone here in period number one. And 
We were having a little bit of issues with the internet connection, so that's why we were a little late getting started. And uh, still getting camera positions and everything else still resolved, so please bear with us, and we appreciate your patience as we get all of that resolved. Puck up the wall, held in there by Deschamps. Now getting to it, McNeil. Or sorry, that was... Uh, that was 87 Crow, not 77 McNeil. My apologies. Puck cleared down the ice by the Red Wings. And that's going to be an icing call against Cole Harbour here with 9.25 left to go in the first period. A very exciting weekend of hockey here at the Rath East Community Centre. The Community Credit Union Arena inside the Rath Eastland Community Centre. That's a bit of a mouthful. Home of the... Junior A, Truro Bearcats of the Maritime Hockey League. And uh, have to send a big shout out to our good friend James Faulkner, who is the normal resident of this booth when he calls Junior A Bearcat games from up here. Letting us crash at his place. Metaphorically speaking, we're actually going to be driving back home to Picto tonight. Puck goes in behind the net, gets picked up there by McEwen. McEwen works it up the wall, intended for Grigoriev. It gets a little bit beyond Grigoriev, held in at the line there by Deschamps. Now back in the hands of the Red Wings and worked past Deschamps and out to center. Deschamps runs a little bit of a pick on Grigoriev, then goes back, gets the puck, plays it out to center. McKenzie knocks it back in. Grigoriev can't touch as he was in offside. That allowed Pitcher to get it out to neutral ice, and now it's picked up by Crow. Here comes Crow. Oh, in across the blue line. Crow with the shot. And that goes wide. Comes up off of the end boards. Picked up there by Steele. Steele will play it off the wall and out to center. Wartman brings it right back in again. Wartman working down the boards. Has it knocked off his stick by Waugh. Following up on the play, though, was MacArthur. MacArthur, or just Arthur, excuse me. And now Arthur has to go back and get it in his own zone. Arthur plays it ahead there for Highland. Highland in across. The Red Wing blue line. One of the Red Wing players lost his stick. Highland able to pick up the puck. Can't get a shot away. Trying to kick it out there was the player who lost his stick. That was Zayden Leslie. And now bringing the puck out to center was why It's dumped back in, then back out. And now Arthur plays it back in. And picking up the puck there is Leslie. And he'll get it out down the ice just past McNeil. And that will be an icing call as we are just a few seconds shy of the midway point of the first period here between the West Hans Warriors and the Cole Harbor Wings. The Wings are the home team for this game, so they do get last change. And we uh, will have the home teams in white for the whole weekend. And... In some of the lead, or some of the games, it will be a North representative against a South representative. Here in this case, both of these teams are considered South teams by Hockey Nova Scotia, but because of the way the, the regions worked out and the playdowns worked out, you ended up with two South teams in the finals. There's a nice shot by Spicer. That goes just up over the crossbar as Hines did get a piece. Of it. Now here comes Leopold coming out the other way. Leopold works in across the blue line, gets the puck down. There's a chance off the backhand for uh, Weil. And making the save and steering it aside was Patrick Marsden. Puck comes up the boards. Leopold goes to play it back to the defender, Stevens. It gets past Stevens and comes out to center. So the Warriors have to touch back up. They'll bring it back into the zone. Going in to the corner after it there is Purcell. Purcell takes it around the boards, plays it up the wall, gets to the line held in there by Green Lewis. Green Lewis with the shot. That gets blocked in front by Purcell and played out to center. Dumped back in again, going back to pick up was uh, Payne, but it's going to be an icing call. Or sorry, that was not Payne. My apologies. That was Hurtis. And so that's going to be an icing call against the Warriors here with 6.16 to go in the first period. Want to quickly send a big thank you to Hockey Nova Scotia for having Petter Picto Sports and AOTV be the broadcasters for this weekend. Here's Arsenault Batik with a shot, and Hines 
makes the save, steering that one aside. Comes to the line, held in there by Hurtis, but then Hurtis has it knocked away by Pitcher. Crow coming hard down the wing as well, but back to get the puck is McEwen. McEwen takes it behind his own net. Ends up losing it there, but the wing's able to stay on possession, get it as far as the line held in there by, by Como. Como will send it down towards the corner. Played up the wall. And then Payne tries to get it out past Deschamps, but Deschamps will hold it in. Now second effort gets past Deschamps and down the length of the ice. Icing is indicated and will be called with 5.27 left to go in the first period. We do try and make our broadcast a little bit interactive here on Petter Picto Sports and AOTV. If you have a... If you have a uh, comment or a question or anything along those lines, you can reach me uh, through Twitter at PetterPC underscore sports. That's P-E-T-T-E-R-P-C underscore sports is the Twitter handle. You can also reach me on Facebook through my Facebook page, facebook.com slash PetterPC sports. And again, send us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from, who you're cheering for, whatever the case may be. And we will certainly... Try and respond to your comments throughout the course of the game. As the wings bring the puck into the zone, McNeil able to knock it free and send it back out to center, but then Waugh dumps it right back in again. Played around the boards. Picked up by McNeil. McNeil able to play it ahead. That pass for Highland into his feet. And the turnover. Now Spicer with the puck. Spicer with the shot. The save made by Hines. And Hines will hang on for a faceoff. Nice save there by the goaltender, Emily Hines. And the faceoff will be to the right of the West Hans Warrior goaltender. Red Wings win the draw. There's a shot that ends up getting blocked by Stevens. Not able to clear the zone, though. Puck picked up by Houston. There's a shot, and that hits the traffic in front of Hines. And now bringing the puck out is Weil. Here's Omri Weil. Weil in across the line, fighting through the check of Steele. Weil still with the, gets to the puck in the corner, plays it towards the front of the net. That gets cleared away by Leslie. Leslie now will play it off the boards. And out come the Red Wings. McKenzie gets the pass over to Steele. Here comes Steele coming in. Steele! And what a back check by Weil to allow, or to not allow Steele to get a shot away. Now we're going to get our first penalty of the game. And the indication is head contact. And it looks like it's going to go against Weil. So a big defensive effort there by Omri Weil. And I went down and talked to the coaching staff prior to the game. And that was what I was given for a pronunciation. So if I'm getting it wrong, I do apologize. And so the first power play of the day goes to the Coal Harbor Red Wings off the head contact penalty to Armory Wild at 11.08 of the period. Here's a chance for Pitcher coming in shorthanded. Takes the shot, the save made. And Marsden will hang on for a faceoff here with 12 seconds gone in the penalty. So a good start to the penalty kill here for the West Hans Warriors as they were able to get the puck down the ice and get a shot away themselves and create an offensive zone faceoff out of it. Another shot that gets blocked by Hurtis. Hurtis gets it as far as the line held in there by Como who plays it down into the corner. McEwen will fire it around the boards for Payne. Payne now looking to clear the zone. Gets it out past Pitcher, but Pitcher able to get back, plays the puck ahead to Crow. Crow trying to fight through the check of Arsenault Batik. Crow now still with it, gets the shot away, and that goes just wide past Marsden. Out to center, Como knocks it down at the just outside his own blue line. Now Crow trying to work his way forward again. Here comes Crow. Tyler Crow can't get a shot away as the back checker. I believe that was Matthew McEwen with a great play on the back check to deny the shot. 
Now Hurtis takes a bump, trying to get the puck in deep. Down into the corner, it's picked up there by Pitcher. Pitcher able to work it out to center. Coming back to get it, Hurtis. He'll play it back deep into his own zone with 35 seconds left to go in the power play. Sent back around to the far side. Spicer gets to the puck there. Gets past Jowdry. Or Spicer still with it. Gets the puck down below the goal line. Goes down, throws it towards the front of the net. That gets cleared away. Picked up by Arsenault Batik. That shot deflected, goes wide. Spicer trying to make a centering pass. That gets broken up. Spicer another attempt at a centering pass, but that one also blocked by Arthur. Now the puck goes in behind the net. McNeil will pick it up there with one second left in the penalty. And we are now back to five on five as coming out of the box was Wild. Puck played out down into the Cole Harbor zone with 1.45 left to go here in the opening frame. And the Red Wings will go back, set up behind their own net, and now start to work their way up the breakout. Pass ahead for Arsenault Batik. Has the puck roll off of his stick. Now it gets to the line. Shot there by Wartman. That goes wide and into the corner. Gets picked up by Houston. Houston plays it up the wall there for Gallant. Out comes Gallant. He's got Grigoriev ahead. That pass for Gr Grigoriev just a little bit through the feet. And now puck comes out to center. McKenzie tries to knock it down there. He does, but Wartman gets to it, following up the play and dumps it down the ice. It gets just past Purcell. Purcell did get a piece of it, to, so there was no icing. Now Wartman comes in, gets a shot away, the save made. And Marsden covers up and hangs on for another face-off with under a minute to go here in period number one of this game between the West Hans Warriors and the Coal Harbor Red Wings. The first of nine championship banners that will be handed out through the weekend. As the Warriors were a little bit slow getting their line change made, so Wartman has to come back out onto the ice. And Leopold has to come back off. And now we're going to... And now Wilde gets waved out of the face-off circle as a result. And coming in to take the draw instead will be Highland. Draw one by McKenzie, but they can't get the puck past Green Lewis. Green Lewis got the shot away. It was knocked down by the traffic in front. Puck goes down below the goal line, picked up back there by, I believe that was Daphne. Now a centering pass actually ends up going off of Marsden, and the puck ends up coming to the line for Stevens. Stevens plays it down to Weil. Weil with the shot. That goes wide. 30 seconds left to go in the period. Sharp angle shot by Wartman, ends up getting blocked by Daphne. Now Daphne able to play it ahead. To the line and out. And picking up just inside his own zone is Stevens. Taking it back, Stevens, Luke, uh, Lucas Stevens plays it back out to center. Ten seconds left to go in the period. Now here comes Weil in across the line. Weil can't get through the checkers. And now the Warriors will have to back up, but the Red Wings will run out of time to get a shot away here in period number one as we finish the opening 15 minutes with the West Hans Warriors and the Cole Harbor Red Wings tied at zero. Shots on goal in that first period favoring the Warriors five to three. As... As we get the, the first period wrapped up, and just a quick note, the uh, format for the Day of Champions will be three 15-minute periods with a quick change of ends between period one and two, and then a full flood and intermission between periods two and three. It will be the same between each game. We'll have a flood between the second and third periods of each game, and then we'll also have a flood between games. Uh, for each of these five games that are played today, four games tomorrow as we play this Day of Champions. And it's really two days of champions here at the Rath Eastland Community Center. And there's also going to be a Day of Champions for the female hockey divisions 
uh, played down in the Halifax area uh, tomorrow. And those will also be streamed on AOTV. Petter Picto Sports will not be there, but it will be another group working with AOTV covering those games. There's a shot by Highland. And the save made there by Marsden. Marsden has been busy, but has been effective here in the early going for the Coal Harbor Red Wings. Puck comes around the boards, held in there by Como. Como knocks it down a second time. Now Highland gets a stick on it. And it ends up coming towards the net. Knocked down there by Hurtis. Hurtis plays it ahead for Spicer. Spicer can't get past Como. Highland back with the puck. That shot doesn't get through. And now finally clearing and coming away with it is Hurtis. Hurtis gets a step around Deschamps. Here comes Hurtis. Coming in. Hurtis with the shot. He scores! Austin Hurtis! Gives the Red Wings the one nothing lead at 1.16 of the second period. What a great play working the puck up the ice. Austin Hurtis makes a couple of nice moves and gives the Coal Harbor Red Wings the one nothing lead. Great play there by Hurtis. I believe it's going to be an unassisted goal. We'll Await confirmation of that here in a mo moment. Meanwhile, Arsenault Batik coming in, getting a shot away. There's a save made by Hines. And the puck comes back to Hines again. Picked up by uh, Arsenault Batik. He tries to wrap it around, but that gets cleared away. Held in at the line by McKenzie. Arsenault Batik can't find the puck. It'll be picked up instead by Reed. Reed will get it out and plays it off the boards. As we get confirmation of the goal for Hurtis. And it is indeed an unassisted goal for Hurtis, Hurtis, excuse me. So there you get the first goal of the game for the Coal Harbor Red Wings to kick things off here on the Day of Champions early in the second period. Here's Wild with the puck now. Nice play there by Wad and knock the puck off of Wild Stick. It'll get picked up by Arsenault Batik. Here comes Arsenault Batik in across the line. Good back check there by, uh, by Reed to not allow Arsenault Batik to get a good shot away. And it's cleared down the ice. That's going to be an icing call against the Warriors with 2.36 on here in the second period. And unfortunately, the one thing I'm not going to be able to have today is uh, season stats for any of these teams. So I can't tell you how many goals that is for Hurtis on the season. There's a shot. Nice save made there by Hines. As Hines had to be sharp on that one. Now Spicer can't get a good shot away as his stick was tied up with a nice play by pitcher. Coming out with the puck there was Reed. Reed had it knocked off his stick. Or sorry, that was not Reed. My apologies. That was uh, Leo, uh, Burgess. And now puck goes down into the corner. Burgess in for checking. Pokes the puck towards the front of the net. Purcell will clear that away. And out come the Red Wings. Here comes Grigoriev. Grigoriev trying to get around Green Lewis. Grigoriev plays it all the way to the far side. Spicer gets to that puck. Can't get his shot through the traffic. And now it'll be picked up by the Warriors and played out to center. Burgess gets it ahead there for Crow. Here comes Crow coming in. Crow with the shot! And that goes just wide. Good chance there for Tyler Crow, but just slightly off the target. Now Gallant in behind the net, plays it around the boards. Deschamps will get to it before it gets to the blue line. Deschamps looking at his options, tries to get it over to Como. Doesn't quite get all the way there. Jowdry picks up the puck. And Gallant able to clear it out to center. Deschamps quickly plays it ahead to Wartman, right back into the zone. Wartman sends it towards the front of the net. That'll get cleared away from there by Daphne. Or, excuse me, that was uh, Purcell 9, not Daphne 8. My apologies. Now Purcell picks up the puck behind the net. Nearly loses it. It does end up getting picked up by Wartman. He scores! 
Nathan Wartman ties up the game at 423 of the second period. It's one to one. Wartman able to take advantage of the turnover and give the Warriors their first goal. And it's one apiece. And now we're going to see a goaltending change for the Wings. As coming in is going to be Callum Hartland. So Patrick Marsden finishes with seven saves on eight shots. And coming into the game is now Callum Hartland in this 1-1 tie about five or four and a half minutes into period number two. Puck dumped down into the Warriors zone. Taking it back behind his net is Colby McNeil. McNeil has a couple of four checkers on him. Coughs the puck up, but coming back to help out there is Arthur. Arthur able to work the puck free to Wartman. And it's played out just past Hurtis. As we get confirmation of Wartman's goal. Sounded like Highland got the assist there. Little bit of up in our spot here within the building we get a little bit of an echo as goals are being announced so it's uh, a little bit more challenging to hear but it sounded like he said highland got the assist we also have the online scoring up in front of us and now we can see that it is indeed luke highland who got the assist on that goal so workman from highland at 423 now here's a chance for Payne. Payne gets the puck down to uh, Arsenault Batik and Arsenault Batik fires a backhand shot just wide. Puck held in at the line there by Leslie. Gets it to Payne. Payne couldn't get the puck back deep and now it's cleared out of the zone by uh, Como. Picked up now by Weil. Weil with the shot. That gets blocked by, I believe that was McEwen. Now Arsenault Batik able to play it ahead to Duffy. Duffy gets knocked down at the line. And the puck will get cleared down. Leslie picks up in his own zone. Zayden Leslie clears it out to center. It ends up on the stick of Payne. Payne plays it ahead for Spicer. Spicer trying to get a shot away. He can't now. Payne can't get a shot either as Weil knocks the puck free. Gets it to the line held in there by Waugh. Now it's played out. Spicer knocks it down just outside the blue line. But fighting through the check there is Leopold. Leopold able to get the puck deep into the Red Wing zone. Leslie back to pick up. He'll take it behind his net then fire it around the boards up to Payne. Coming in is Green Lewis. Green Lewis able to create the turnover. He sends it into the near side corner where it'll be picked up by Pitcher. Pitcher plays it out towards the front of the net. Knocked down by Crow. Crow gets a backhand shot but can't get it through the traffic. Another shot and that one will get cleared over to the near side wall. 8-11 left to go here, second period. 1-1 the score with the goals coming off the sticks of Nathan Wartman for the Warriors and Austin Hurtis for the Red Wings. Puck gets past Leslie down the ice. Wall will go back and get it, but before he gets there, it will be an icing call against the Warriors with 7.57 left on the clock here in period number two. Again, we do want to... Uh, we do like to keep our broadcast interactive, so by all means, send us a message through Facebook or through Twitter. Either way, we would love to hear from you, like we heard from Emily Ann watching online and cheering for Jaden Reed and the whole West Hans team. Thanks, Emily Ann, for letting us know that you're watching. We appreciate having you along for the ride. Here comes Pitcher. Pitcher with the shot. That misses just wide, comes off the end boards, gets picked up by McKenzie. McKenzie able to play it ahead and getting it out to center there is Gallant. Gallant plays it ahead for Grigoriev. Grigoriev with a shot. That goes just wide. Gallant tries to get it off of the end boards, but the back checker tied him up and that allows Crow to get to the puck. Crow gets tripped up as he's clearing his zone. Gets the puck ahead to Burgess though and we're going to get a penalty for Crow getting tripped up there and it's going to be Grigoriev who goes off. 
So the Warriors now get their first power play of the afternoon, or of the morning, excuse me. It feels like afternoon already. And I mean that in a good way, not, uh, not in a negative way at all. So Alexander Grigoriev off for tripping at 7.44 of the second period to give the West Hans Warriors their first power play of this U11B championship game here from the Rath Eason Community Center. Shot from Como from the point ends up going wide. Puck picked up by McEwen. McEwen not able to clear the zone as it was held in there by Deschamps. Now back on it is Hurtis. He'll get it up the wall, but again Deschamps holds it in. Plays it down the wall, taking a bit of a swing at it there was Jowdry. Puck played into the near side corner. It'll get picked up there by, by uh, Highland. And now it's turned over and sent out to center. Back to get it is Deschamps. Deschamps gets it ahead for Jowdry. Jowdry can't quite get to it as it's knocked the other way down the ice by Steele. Deschamps will go back and pick up with 1.10 left to go in the penalty. Deschamps' pass gets a little bit beyond Workman. Comes all the way into the Red Wing zone. Waugh there to get it. He'll get it out to center. Payne deflects it down the ice. Deschamps back to pick up as Payne is forechecking here on the penalty kill. Deschamps able to play it over to Highland. And now Highland will try to make a pass ahead. That gets bro broken up by Arsenault Batik. And it's played back into the... Cole Harbor zone and then sent down the ice again with 37 seconds left in the penalty. Back to pick up is Arthur. He'll take it behind his own net, play it up the wall there for Leopold. Leopold has his pocket picked by Alexander ba or by Arsenault Batik, excuse me. And now it ends up inside the Red Wings bench, so we'll get a stoppage with 20 seconds left in the penalty and with 5.35 left to go here in period number one. Should also mention as well that uh, all of these games will get posted to YouTube as well. When you go to YouTube, uh, just either search for the AOTV channel, and all of these games will be on that channel, or uh, because they will all be labeled by the team names. So if you just go to the YouTube chat or go to the YouTube page and then search Warriors and Red Wings or search the words Warriors Red Wings. Don't put the word and in there. Just put Warriors Red Wings. It should come up because what I'm what we're going to we're going to label each game with every t with both teams names. And so they should be relatively easy to find and you'll be able to watch them back on YouTube as many times as you want. And for these young hockey players, hopefully this will be a day of great memories, win or lose. Wild with the shot that goes wide. One one left or uh, one one with under five minutes left to go in the second period. McNeil from the point takes the shot that goes wide. Comes off the end boards. Leopold turns, swings, and has that puck go off the heel of his stick, and that'll allow Spicer to bring it out. Here comes Spicer in across the red line, dumps the puck in, comes around the boards into the near side corner, going back after it is Reed. Reed gets to it, plays it up, but it's intercepted by Spicer. Spicer with the shot, and what a save there by Emily Hines to keep this a 1-1 game. Great save there by the Warrior goaltender with 4.25 left here in the first period. Or second period, excuse me. What day is it? Where are we? What period are we in? I don't know. We'll try and keep her going here. There's a shot from the point off the stick of Houston that, or by, off the stick of uh, Daphne rather. Now Houston dumps the puck in. It goes off of Hines and Hines steers it over to the far corner where getting to it is Green Lewis. He plays it up the wall, held in at the line there by Purcell. Now it's out, race for the puck. And just over skating it slightly there was Burgess, but following up as Crow, Crow, Crow can't get a shot away, though, as he was bumped off the puck. Now it comes to the line. Green Lewis sends it down into the corner for Crow. Crow with the sharp angle shot, and that doesn't miss by a whole bunch. Now it comes around the board. Stevens will send it back in deep around the boards. Duffy will let it go to the other corner. Over to get it is Crow. Crow has it poked off his stick by Steele. 
Comes to the line. Green Lewis there. His shot. That gets blocked by Mac, uh, by um, McKenzie. Excuse me. Another tripping penalty coming up here against the Red Wings as they touch the puck. And so we'll get the stoppage here. And it looks like it's going to be Braden Gallant who goes off for the trip. So a second power play of the morning here in this second period as the tripping call goes against Braden Gallant and the Cole Harbor Red Wings. 3.17 left to go here in this second period. Warriors 0 for 1 so far with the power play this, a- or this morning. Red Wings able to clear the puck out to center. Deschamps gets it over to Wartman. Wartman, the goal scorer for the Warriors so far, had the puck knocked away from him. Now it's played ahead to Highland. Highland will bring it into the Coal Harbor zone. Nice move there by Highland. Highland can't get the puck through, though, as it ends up coming up and hitting Hurtis. Trying to clear the zone out. Uh, Arsenal Batik lost the puck near the blue line. Now it's cleared out. Como back to get it. Como plays it ahead. It goes right off the stick of Arsenal Batik, though. And Como able to win it back. Highland plays it up boards, held in by McEwen, or knocked down by McEwen, rather. McEwen can't get it past Highland, and now Highland will bring it into the zone. Highland get, able to get through the check. Highland gets the pass over, and they score! Peyton Jowdry, after a great effort by Luke Highland to get the puck ahead, work it up the ice, Jowdry able to receive the pass and tip in the power play goal and give the West Hans Warriors their first lead of the game. It's two to one for the visitors. Peyton Jowdry able to tip the puck just past Callum Hartland for the goal to give them the lead with 2.25 left to go in the second. And the Warriors now ahead two to one. Here's Reed with the puck. He has it knocked off his stick by Spicer. Gallant trying to gather it in. He can't, but Spicer does. Spicer will use the far side boards, plays it off the wall. Knocked down by Arthur. Arthur plays it ahead again. As we get confirmation of Joe Dries' goal. And Highland with the only assist on that one, as we thought. Here comes Grigoriev now. Grigoriev lost his footing crossing the blue line but was able to stay with the puck. Then got a pass to Gallant. Gallant with the shot. That was going to go wide. But Hines steers it aside just to be sure. Now it's played up the wall. And out to center. Leslie goes to dump it back in with 125 left to go here in the second. Going back to pick up the puck is Arthur. Arthur fires it around the boards. It'll be held in at the line there by Waugh. Waugh gets it down to Spicer. Spicer's backhander gets blocked, but following up on the play, there's Daphne with a shot, or Gregoriev, excuse me, with the shot. And the save made again by Emily Hines to hang on for another faceoff. 1-12 left to go here in the second period. And the Warriors... Leading for the first time in this game. Puck dumped down into the Red Wing zone. Played around as we're into the final minute. Clearing the zone. McKenzie loses the puck there to Crow. Crow dumps it back in. Burgess is in offside. That'll give time for Duffy to go back and pick up the puck. Duffy doesn't like the angles going that way, so turns, comes back towards the near side, plays it ahead for Houston. Houston, able to bring it out across the center line. His pass gets knocked down. Houston gets it back again. This time he'll dump it in, and Green Lewis goes back to pick up in his own zone. He's being chased by Steele. Steele able to create the turnover as he gets to the puck in the corner. 18 seconds left in the period. Now McKenzie can't knock the puck down, but it comes to the line, gets held in there. That shot blocked by Green Lewis. Green Lewis looking to clear the zone with eight seconds left, but again, it's held in. Now the puck comes to the front of the net. Stevens coughs it up to Steele. Steele with a glorious chance, and Emily Hines has to come up big again. And for Hines, she ends up 
stopping seven of eight shots in that second period, including a very tough one just before the buzzer. And now we're going to have the flood between periods number two and three, so we'll have a bit of a break. We're going to take the break as well. We'll come back and bring you the third period in just a few minutes. You are watching the Hockey Nova Scotia Day of Champions from the Rath East Link Community Center, the Community Credit Union Arena, here on Petter Picto Sports through AOTV.
All right, folks, welcome back as we get ready for the start of the third period here. Let's give you a quick rundown of what the rest of the day is going to look like. The 11 o'clock game will have the Bedford Blues white against the Straight Richmond Pirates. And that is a uh, U11A championship game for Bedford and Straight Richmond. Then at 1 o'clock, it is the Sackville Flyers and the Pictou County Crushers in the U11AA and yes, even though it is Petter Picto Sports, we will call it down the middle. Uh, the Sackville Flyers are just as favored as the Picto County Crushers. Uh, we're not going to show any favoritism to our hometown team. 
during the broadcast. Although I will, I will freely admit, I'm going to say it right now, I will freely admit that in my heart of hearts, there will be a little bit of me cheering for the Crushers, but I will make sure that it doesn't show up in the broadcast. Then at 3 o'clock, it'll be the U13B championship game between the new Waterford Sharks and the Dartmouth Whalers. And then wrapping up day number one, the 5 o'clock game, the Tassa Ducks and the Cape Breton County Islanders. And that is the U13A championship game. And then tomorrow we'll have U13AA, U15B and A, and then U18 uh, A will be our final game of the day tomorrow. Five games today, four games tomorrow here at the Hockey Nova Scotia Day of Champions. As we get ready for the third period of this, our opening game, the U11B Championship between the West Hans Warriors and the Coal Harbor Red Wings. And it is uh, such an honor, such a thrill to be involved with Day of Champions here again. Uh, this is my fourth time, I believe, doing Day of Champions uh, for Hockey Nova Scotia. And uh, it has been an absolute treat every single time we've had a chance to do it. And so thrilled to be here yet again and part of this wonderful, wonderful event, this great hockey and uh, getting a chance to see these players who will be the next stars of the Junior A, the Junior B, all the other leagues that I cover, the U18 majors, the U15 majors. These players have a chance to work their way up, get to that level at some point. For some of these players, hey, they just play for the fun of it. There's Wartman with a chance, another chance as they work at the side of the net. Highland trying to find the puck. Now Jodry with a chance. Puck is still loose, finally covering it up as Hartland as the Warriors with a quick opportunity early. Shots on goal in the second period, by the way, favoring the Red Wings 8-4. to four. And the two-period total favored the Red Wings 11... Or, um, yes, favored the Red Wings 11-9. to nine. But the Warriors with a couple of quick shots here in the early going. The Red Wings had one shot on, a dump, on the dump in as well. So we're now up to 12-11 for the Red Wings. As McKenzie deflects the puck as he ends running into a player. Now Payne gets to it down in the corner. Couldn't get a good centering pass away. Now the pass up for Wartman. Wartman gets it out to center. Knocked down by Waugh. Jaudry pushes the puck ahead again. It gets past Waugh. Played up for Arsenault Batik. And here comes Elias Arsenault Batik. Has it knocked away from him by Weil. And coming the other way, Leopold. Leopold has it. Squirt off of his stick, but while able to get to it, pokes it as far as the Coal Harbor blue line. Now it's played back down. And in comes Steele. Steele has it knocked off his stick. Getting to it is Arthur. Up for while. Leopold following up. Leopold gets it in across the blue line. Waugh there to get it. Now into the corner. Daphne works it ahead, out to Arthur. Back in, and that's Waugh actually on it, sorry. I don't think Daphne's actually on the ice there. I don't see him. Or her, I should say, Lila Daphne. Puck played around to the far side. Arsenault Batik trying to get it past Reed, but Reed able to send it back down. In behind the net with 2.18 gone in the second period. Recognizing that there's no lane there. Turning the other way is Hurtis. Hurtis now trying to get ahead. Hurtis, who had one end-to-end -end rush that lead it, led to a goal. Actually, that's Spicer. 10, not 15. My apologies. Spicer trying to get a shot away, but Arthur with the partial block. Now Leopold gets to it, plays it up the wall. Gallant can't hold the line. Purcell picks it up at center, dumps it back in. It's fired back out to center, just past the stick of Purcell, and down the ice. Going back to get it now 
is Duffy. Duffy behind the net. Works it ahead. That gets knocked down. Here's a chance. And just putting that up over the net there was Crow. Now a centering pass. Trying to find it is, was uh, Burgess, but Burgess couldn't get the shot away. Now Crow picks up. Crow coming to the front of the net. Has it knocked away from him there? And it's cleared away at the side of the net. Red Wings under pressure, looking to clear the zone. They, Grigoriev able to get it out to center, but Grigoriev knocks down Green Lewis and will go to the penalty box for, I believe it's going to be called cross-checking. And that is the indication, yes. So Alexander Grigoriev grows off for the cross-check here with 11.33 left to go in the third period. And the West Hans Warriors go to their third power play of the morning. There's a shot. Gets cleared away from the front of the net. Houston now will launch down the ice. Green Lewis hustling back to get to it. And Green Lewis will pick up. Trying to get away from the forecheck of Steele. Makes a nice pass ahead. And now it's picked up by Crow. And Crow out to center. Tyler Crow across the blue line. Working around. Crow with the shot. He scores! Tyler Crow makes it 3-1 to one for the West Hans Warriors. Their second power play goal of the game. They're now two for three on the power play this morning. And they're ahead three to one. Tyler Crow with the goal to extend the lead for the West Hans Warriors. And now the Red Wings for the first time in this game trail by two. Here comes McKenzie. McKenzie. Cuts around Como. McKenzie tries to throw it to the front of the net. Goes off a couple of skates. And now it comes back to the corner. Payne picks up there. Trying to center it. Jodry knocks that down. And Highland. They announced it as 97 Reed. It was actually 87 Crow who got that goal. And <laughs> they, they also marked it as an unassisted goal. I mean, sometimes the way these jerseys are tucked in, it's hard to tell an 87 from a 97, but you can tell the difference because 97 has the, the uh, locks flowing out of the back of the helmet and 97 does not, and it was definitely the flow and locks that came with that goal. So while it was announced in the building as Jaden Reed uh, here on the broadcast in For Eternity, we will know that it was Tyler Crow who scored that power play goal at 454 of the third period, or 354, excuse me, of the third period to make it a 3-1 game. There's a shot, he scores! The shot from the point coming into the zone, and it's Braden Gallant, I believe, who took that shot. Give credit to Grigoriev. He wasn't sure if that puck had gone in yet or not, so he went chasing after it to make sure it had actually crossed the line. But the, I believe it was Gallant who was working down that left wing. And at exactly five minutes of the third period, just like that, it's three to two as the Red Wings pull back to within one. We'll wait for the official word on that, but I believe it was Gallant as we get an icing call against the Warriors. So, we'll just wait for the official word, because... It is indeed Braden Gallant with the goal. 
Zayden Leslie with the assist on that one. So Braden Gallant from Zayden Leslie at five minutes even to make it the 3-2 score line. Here's Purcell stepping up, but Crow able to get the puck out to center. Crow, Crow coming in. All alone, Crow with the shot, he scores! Tyler Crow reclaims the two goal lead. It's now four to two. As the scoring comes fast and furious here in this third period, three goals in the span of one minute and 44 seconds. Tyler Crow, then Braden Gallant, then Tyler Crow again. And it's now four to two, and here comes another chance. Big kick save made there by Hines. Off the backhand chance for Steele. Now Highland brings the puck out. Crow with the goal. And that goal unassisted at 5.38 of the third period. So that's two goals for Crow here on the morning. Making it back to a four two or back to a two goal lead. It's now four to two. As we've been going back and forth and back and forth here at the Rath Eastlink Community Center, the Community Credit Union Arena in beautiful Truro, Nova Scotia. There's a shot that gets partially blocked. Batted away from the front of the net by Stevens. Highland gets the puck, brings it out across the blue line. Loses it there to Hart Hurtis, who plays it ahead. And now here's Spicer. Spicer with the shot. Hines the save. Puck is still loose. Arsenault Batik had a whack at it, but now it's cleared away from danger by Jaudry and played out to center. Back with it there is Hurtis. Hurtis, who opened the scoring back in the second period. Now S Stevens dumps it deep into the Red Wing zone. Played around the boards. Highland will be the first one to it at the far wall. Highland being watched by Arsenault Batik. And now, now it's played out. Leopold can't get a stick on it. Payne will get the puck in across the Warrior blue line. Payne kicks the puck ahead. Hines gets out, pokes it towards the corner. Centering pass in front for Arsenault Batik. Arsenault Batik is scores! Eliash Arsenault Batik. And it's a one goal game again. Now four to three. So now we've had four goals in the span of three minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> What a wild third period we've had here so far. A combined three goals in the first two periods, and then in a span of three minutes and 30 seconds, we've had four goals here, and we've barely played just now. We finally played half of a period here in this U11B championship game at the Day of Champions, and the Warriors lead the Red Wings four to three. But here comes Cole Harbor again. There's a shot, nice save by Hines. And Dublin Payne with the lone assist on that one. Now here comes Weil. Weil has the puck knocked off his stick, but he's able to chase it back down again. Here comes Weil coming in. That shot, that gets deflected away. It'll be picked up by Reed. Reed stops, turns, has the puck knocked off his stick by Gallant, and out come the Red Wings trailing by one. 6.40 to go. There's a shot, and that goes just wide. The shot taken there by Logan Waugh. Or, excuse me, was that Grigoriev? The font makes a six and a five hard to tell apart. Yeah, that was Grigoriev. Puck cleared down the ice. Leslie hustling back to get onto it. Zayden Leslie stops or takes it out from behind the net, plays it up for Houston, but stepping up and intercepting that was Leopold. 
Now it's out to center and here comes Spicer. Spicer trying to work his way in. Sp still on the puck, has it knocked off his stick by Crow. Spicer plays it down into the corner. McNeil will go and get it. McNeil tries to play it around to the far side, knocking it down there with Steele. He slowed it down enough, now Purcell at the line. Can't get it past Pitcher. Pitcher not able to clear the zone though. Puck played down into the corner. Spicer going in after it there, working against uh, Arthur. Steele sends it behind the net. Getting to it there was Green Lewis. Now in front of the net. Spicer can't get a shot away. There's a shot, they score! Kane Houston ties up the game with 5.46 left to go. Or 5.26 left to go, excuse me. Kane Houston ties up the game at four goals apiece. <laughs> Don't blink. You might miss something. Holy cow. Five goals in less than six minutes of playing time have taken a 2-1 lead for the Warriors, became 3-1, became 3-2, became 4-2, became 4-3, is now 4-4. As Houston now ties it up. Houston unassisted. At 9.34, and that ties up the game at four goals apiece. And the Red Wings pressing again. There's a shot, and that goes just wide. Now Payne can't quite get on the puck in the corner. It's picked up instead by Wartman. He'll get it forward to Jodry. Here comes Jodry. Jodry in across the line. Takes it over to the far wall with four and a half. Just over, left to go. There's a shot steered aside by Hartland. Around to the near boards. Green Lewis steps up, gets it to Wartman. Wartman can't get his shot through. Now the puck played to Payne. Payne will get it out to center. Stevens back to pick up just inside his own blue line. Stevens turns, works his way towards center. He gets in through center, dumps the puck down deep. Back to get it will be McEwen. McEwen. Looking to play it ahead for Gallant, but that's knocked down instead by Leopold. Battle in the corner. Four players in there battling for the puck. It's worked free. Trying to get the backhander through was Weil. And now played up to the line, held in by Green Lewis. Spicer gets it forward. Gallant now will play it ahead for Grigoriev. Grigoriev has it knocked off his stick by Como. And it's played back out to center. Wild can't quite reach it. Getting there instead is Gallant. He'll play it just past the reach of Como and back into the West Hands Warrior zone with 3.25 to go. It's turned over to Gregoria. There's a shot and a big block by Como to steer that one into the corner. Now Spicer can't get the puck away from Deschamps. Deschamps works it up the boards. It's played out to center, dumped back in again by Hurtis. 3.08 left here, third period, tie game. Up for Leopold. Grigoriev on the back check. Knocked it away from Leopold, but it ends up rolling all the way to Weil. Weil has it knocked off his stick by McEwen. Played into the near side corner. Up the boards, Leopold knocks that one down, gets a shot away, it goes wide, wraps around the boards to the far side. Getting over to it there is uh, uh, Reed. Now a centering pass, Leopold with the redirect, but didn't change the direction quite enough as it rolls wide. Now getting to it is Hurtis. Hurtis opened the scoring in this game way back in the early stages of the second period. That was eight total goals ago. And now here comes a chance for Grigoriev. Grigoriev has a step. Grigoriev coming in alone, takes the shot, and what a save by Heinz, and then just kicks the puck off of the line. What a huge save there by Emily Heinz. That might be the best save of the weekend that we'll see. And it's in the opening game of the event. What a save by Emily Hines. Oh my goodness. Sometimes you need your goalie to come up big and did she ever there for the Warriors. 
Emily Hines with a fantastic save. Steele can't find it in his feet. McKenzie does. He'll play it down into the Warrior zone. Back to get it is Arthur. Under two minutes left to go in a tie hockey game. Spicer trying to get it to Steele. Steele looking to work his way past pitcher. Puck comes back to Spicer. Throws it towards the net. That gets knocked down by McNeil and played out to center. Dumped right back in again. McNeil will take it down below the goal line. Back behind the net. Pass over to the near side wall for pitcher. Pitcher looking to work his way out to center. Gets it out. Plays it forward, and that's going to be an icing call with 1.22 on the clock. As we see the Blues and Pirates are starting to have some of their fans make their way in and be ready to roll here for the next game coming up in about 50 minutes. But we still have some exciting action left in this one. Here's Purcell with the shot. That gets blocked. Payne now can't get a backhander through. And Wartman will get it and bring it out to center with 1.12 left on the clock. Here comes Wartman. Wartman with the shot. And the kick save made by Hartland. Wartman gets to it in the corner. Plays it around to the far side corner. Picked up over there by Highland. Highland not able to get it to the front of the net. We're into the final minute. Here's a pass ahead for Payne. Payne coming in. Payne has the puck knocked off his stick, but gets back onto it at, inside the blue line. Can't get the puck towards the front of the net as Wartman was there to knock that one down. Now here comes Arsenault Batik. Arsenault Batik with a shot, and Chowdhury deflects that one. Now Spicer gets it past Wartman. Spicer coming to the middle of the ice. Spicer, a couple of nice moves, gets a shot, and they score! Ethan Spicer with 30 seconds left. Gives the Cole Harbor Red Wings their lead back. First time they've led since it was 1-0. They take the lead with the score now 5-4. What a goal by Ethan Spicer. And the Red Wings are now going to take their time out. Red Wings want to take their time out and talk things over to make sure they've got everything exactly as they want it for the third, for the final 30 seconds. As they talk over what the defensive assignments are going to be for this last 30 seconds. And that is all that separates them right now from the Provincial Championship banner, the Provincial Championship trophy, and the chance to say that they are the best U11B team in the province of Nova Scotia for the 2021-22 season. As we get confirmation of Spicer's goal, Dublin Payne gets his second assist of the game. The puck dumped right in onto Hartland. And Hartland covers up with 21 and a half seconds left to go in the third period. We're <laughs> what a wild finish it has been to this game. And they're, the uh, Warriors now with the offensive zone faceoff get Emily Hines out of the net. No, now Hines is going to have to go back to the net. They're going to wait and see if they win the draw or not. And 21 and a half seconds left. They're going to get Hines to the net, or to the box. Crow comes out to be the extra attacker. Arsenault Batik behind his own net, being watched by Weil. Puck comes loose, picked up by McEwen. McEwen plays it up the wall. Knocked down there by Stevens. Down to the corner, four seconds left. And that should do it. The Red Wings are 2022 U11B Provincial Champions. Five for the final score. Shots on goal in the third period. 11 by Cole Harbor. Nine by West Hans. The final total 22 to 18 in favor of the Cole Harbor Red Wings. And we're gonna stick around for the presentation of the medals and the banner and everything else. So stay here as we
stick around for all of that and the happy faces on the Coal Harbor Red Wing side and for the West Hans Warriors they put out a glorious effort they did they gave everything that Coal Harbor could handle and then some but it wasn't quite enough here on this Saturday morning as the Coal Harbor Red Wings are your U11B provincial champions. And now we'll have the presentation of the medals and the trophy and everything else. Tyler Crow, player of the game for the West Hans Warriors. And the game winning goal gets player of the game, Ethan Spicer.
So there you have it, the Coal Harbor Red Wings coming away with the opening championship of the weekend as they are your U11, excuse me, U11B Hockey Nova Scotia gold medalists. Congrats as well to the West Hans Warriors. They put on a great effort this afternoon or this morning coming just 30 seconds short with the game-winning goal coming with 30 seconds re remaining, Ethan Spicer with a goal he'll probably never forget. And that's going to wrap it up here for us at day or game number one. Stick around. We'll have the next game coming up in about half an hour as the... Straight Richmond Pirates and the Bedford Blues White will play for the U11A provincial title coming up in just a few minutes. Until then, on behalf of my awesome cameraman Ashton Rieke, this is Michael Petter saying, may your skates always be sharp, may your shots always hit the top shelf. Final score once again, the Coal Harbor Red Wings win the Hockey Nova Scotia banner by beating the West Hans Warriors 5-4. Thanks and enjoy the rest of your Saturday.